Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Paul. Once again, welcome to our channel. And uh, I thank you for taking some time tonight to listen to this video lecture. For more videos, you're always welcome to visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net. That is www.usmlevideos.net, where you can browse through hundreds of videos explaining thousands and thousands of most important points you should know before taking USMLE examination. Tonight I want to take a few minutes to discuss about the role of uh, PTH and vitamin D and also the clinical significance of uh, bisphosphonates. The two most important minerals associated with bone formation, calcium and phosphate, they enter human body through intestinal absorption and they are excreted, they are filtered actually in the kidney. Like 98% of filtered calcium and 85% of filtered phosphate are reabsorbed by the kidney. So they are absorbed into human body through intestines and reabsorbed through the kidneys. So intestines and kidneys, they play most important role in their metabolism. That's why any disease that affects the intestines or any disease that affects the kidneys, they ultimately affect bone mineralization. Tonight, let us talk about two most important hormones that play important role in calcium metabolism, PTH and vitamin D. Vitamin D, it is uh, actually starts as a proactive form. It is converted into its active form by the action of uh, PTH. However, vitamin D in turn, it inhibits the levels of PTH in the body. First, let us uh, think about how these two important uh, hormones, they play a major role in calcium homeostasis. From the guts, Calcium is absorbed into the blood through the action of 125-dihydroxy D. You remember how vitamin D is absorbed, is formed in the human body. Then 25-hydroxy vitamin D is formed in the liver and that is later converted into 125-dihydroxy vitamin D and other forms in the kidneys. So after formation of 125-dihydroxy vitamin D in the kidneys, it actually works to increase the serum calcium level. So that's a major point we need to remember here. On the other hand, what inhibits the hormonal levels of 125-dihydroxy uh, vitamin D? The most important thing you need to remember is FGF23, fibroblast growth factor 23. It decreases the levels of 125-dihydroxy vitamin D formation in the kidneys. Now succinctly, 125-dihydroxy vitamin D, it also increases the deposition of calcium in the bone. Now calcitonin, it reduces the serum calcium level in the blood and it increases absorption of calcium into the bones. That is the role of calcitonin. You need to remember one other very important point. That is both PTH and vitamin D, they stimulate the formation of the bone. They also stimulate the resorption of the bone. In other words, remember the two most important cells that play a major role in bone formation. Osteoblasts, they form the bones, whereas osteoclasts, they resorb the bones. 
they actually demineralize the bones they remove calcium from the bones those that, that is the duty of osteoclasts so both osteoblasts and osteoclasts osteoblasts they build the bone whereas osteoclasts they actually reduce the bone density they actually destroys the bone however pth and vitamin d that is 125 dihydroxy vitamin d they both stimulate i mean they have positive effect on both osteoblasts and osteoclasts that in other words they have a role in both bone formation and bone resorption now where is the role for bisphosphonates bisphosphonates they are very very important medications in fact every physician is using them the most important are ethidronate pamidronate alendronate risidronate tiludronate ebandronate and zolidronate or zolendronic acid so these bisphosphonates they are analogs of pyrophosphates and they mainly work in osteoclasts we do not know the exact mechanism of bisphosphonates however they are mostly concentrated in areas where hydroxy apatite crystals work so these bisphosphonates they are very very helpful whenever you want to prevent osteoporosis whenever you want to treat paget's disease whenever you want to treat hypercalcemia associated with malignancy so those are the three most important advantages of bisphosphonates number one they are used to treat osteoporosis number two they are used to treat Paget's disease number three they are used to treat hypercalcemia associated with malignancy so bisphosphonates they are highly useful but their main side effect is they irritate gastric mucosa they might cause even irritate esophageal mucosa that's why it is important to take this medication with plenty of water in a standing position food inhibits its absorption that's why we recommend patient to take these medications on an empty stomach so take it on an empty stomach in a standing position with plenty of water now we need to talk about their side effects most commonly remember this thing they cause peptic ulcer if, if, the, if the patient has peptic ulcer disease do not give them these bisphosphonates if the patient has esophageal motility disorder if the patient has some decreased kidney function these medications are not indicated and one recent study showed zolidronic acid it is associated with increased incidence of atrial fibrillation so that's an important point right there zolidronic acid an important modern bisphosphonate is associated with increased incidence of atrial fibrillation that's it for tonight and uh, i hope you find something useful in these points and uh, you can always add more to this lecture by posting your comments in our blogs at www usmlavideos.net that is www.usmlavideos.net thank you have a good night